Welcome to the Starch Queens Talking Tuesday. It's May 8th and it's starting to warm up. So on the agenda tonight, we're going to be talking about hydration versus dehydration, sunscreen, yep. what happens inside your body three days after transitioning to a plant-based diet, the keto diet, water filters, and what to wash with the produce. So let's start out with the keto diet. Who, who asked that question? I forgot. So it was one of uh, Laura from my plant-based Chico uh, group. She um, sent me a private message and she said, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of people in my plant, in, in her network of friends and family who are doing the keto diet. They're losing weight and she's concerned obviously for their health and she's not losing weight as fast on a plant-based diet. But again, you know, it goes down to calorie density. So She's just wanting to have some ammunition on, you know, what, what is, what's the keto diet doing to your body? And I said, well, the keto diet is just a, a new way of saying the Atkins diet, you know, it's the low carb fraud, you know, and um, right. boy, I, I really liked Dr. T. Colin Campbell's book. And, oh, what was it called? The low carb fraud. I believe that's what it was. It was such a good book, but go ahead, Jean, and talk to us all about, okay, about well, keto. Let's talk about keto and, and what happens is your body, this is where your body produces ketones in the liver to be used as energy instead of carbohydrates. And it's got a lot of different names, the ketogenic diet, the low carb, low carb, high fat. You know, there's a lot of different names and a lot of different spins on it. Yeah. But basically what happens, it, you know, your, your body, there's three base, basic macronutrients. We need carbohydrates, which is the majority of it and proteins and fat and the proteins and fat are small amounts really small amounts that we're supposed to do our blood our cells like to use the blood the the sugar which comes from carbohydrates as our body's main source of energy so in the absence of these carbs so our body starts to break down the fat molecules called ketone bodies and this process is called ketosis and once you start to reach ketosis, you're, the, you're going to use these ketone bodies to generate energy until you start eating carbs again. So ketosis is a natural process. The body starts like when you, you know, when your body goes into, like it's that feast or famine. And in the day before where, you know, we didn't have grocery stores on every corner, Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, it's, the issue was feast or famine. You either had food or you didn't. So where well, your body would go into what's called ketosis. Or if you got sick, your body would go into this ketosis to provide energy for your body while you were sick and giving your body a chance to heal. Okay, so the end goal of a, of a keto diet is to force your body into this metabolic state. You're not doing it through starvation of calories. You're doing it from a starvation of carbohydrates. Okay, so if you go on Dr. McDougall's website, he talks about ketosis being associated with a, a loss of appetite, uh, nausea, fatigue, hypotension, which is the, the lower blood pressure. And yeah, the result is, is basically a decrease in food calorie intake. Ketosis is, this is the, the key to the diet success is by allowing the body to starve while reducing the suffering of <laughs> severe hunger Ooh, pangs. Yay. <laughs> okay. Fun. So initially, you know, initially you're going to have, you know, some major weight loss in the beginning. Okay. But this is mostly water weight. So it's not, you're not really burning a lot of fat. Um, people who manage to stay on these, you know, high protein, low carb diets are going to lose weight because you're basically restricting calories. And that's the bottom line. And you're getting rid of, of things that are processed, you know, like, like processed breads, um, crackers, things ba like that. So bagels. Bagels, you know, donuts, muffins, you know, you're getting bread. <laughs> yeah. All good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I used to love that. Yeah. I still do. I don't. But not part of my life anymore. But these are these benefits are going to be temporary because you can't stay long in this state. So you're going to be you're eventually going to get sick and people are going to go back to their old way of eating. You know, it's it's a diet. You can't sustain this. It's mm -mm. not long term. Nope. So you know, we've had this resurgence of these high protein diets again. The biggest problem in, in our diet is the amount of fat that we're consuming. Oh, so God. yeah, maybe we're getting, you know, some of the fat down, but still it's, it's in the, you know, animal products, they contain a high amount of fat. And when you think about fat per se, and if you're eating fat, it only takes in terms of metabolic, 
to, for your body, it only takes 3% of energy to convert that fat into your cells. It goes right in without any basic problems. Okay, fine. To convert carbohydrates to fat, you're talking 30% in terms of energy needed to convert that, those carbs into fat. So it's expensive, you know, in terms of your body per se. It comes at a cost. So, yeah, it does. So, and you can literally go into somebody, you know, to, to doing an autopsy on somebody, you can cut open the fat cells and see exactly because the fat doesn't change. No, So no. whatever you can see, you can see exactly where the fat's coming from. So Co um, Colleen says, uh, it's, is it really just Atkins 2018? Yep. It's really just Atkins yeah. 2018. I know. There's nothing and good about it. Well, then you have osteoporosis, you have kidney stones, because what's happening is you're eating a lot of animal products, which are very acidic to the body. Your body is alkaline. Your bloodstream is, has a pH of 7.35 to 7.4, a very narrow range. And so the food that you're eating, you have to alkalize that, and you usually do it at a cost from your bones. So you're taking the calcium out of your bones, and then that builds up, and then you have issues with, with kidney stones in your bloodstream, or not in your bloodstream, in your, in your kidneys. So those are going to be causing issues for you down the road. So I yeah. think the question was, what do you say to your family? Because I just had this situation happen to me because my family is pretty much morbidly obese on, on both my, you know, my mother and father's side. Mine too. And, and we just had my brother announced at, at our last major gathering together and he showed me the diet and it didn't say ketosis on the top, but it was basically a, a high protein, low carb diet. And they said, then I started to explain to him, I said, you know, your body's going to go into ketosis. And he's like, what's that? And, you know, and I thought, you know what? There's not even, there's no point in me. Because first of all, I'm the baby of the family. He's not going to listen to me. Yeah. You're, so I finally you, just you said have your to him, doctorate, you know but what? You know. Yeah. No, but I'm not a medical doctor. Oh, geez. So, all right. You know. Yeah, I put your, mm -hmm. I put your nutrition and education up against any medical doctor. Well, anyway. Just so, saying. You know. Thank you. <laughs> but he, he doesn't get it. You right. know, when I told him, I said, you might want to look into ketosis. I said, and see what the issues are to your body. Because he's, he's morbidly obese. And yeah, he, he was so excited. He had like a 15 pound weight loss initially. He was so excited about that. And bravo. But that's kind of like a, you know, a spit in the ocean for what you need to lose, dear. Um, yeah. It's, what am I supposed to say? Yeah. And, I, and, and I feel for people who are dealing with it because they defend it like there's nobody's business. Yep. I mean, they truly do. Yeah. So they, I, I, think, I think you just need to, you know, say, use the Doug Lyle approach. You know, it seems to be working for me, this using plants as, as plant-based diet, that, you know, it seems to be working for me. It seems to be okay. So... Yes, Nancy's hydrating. We're going to be talking about hydration tonight. <laughs> so I, I don't really know how to answer that question because I just ran into it myself. And I was it's hard to. It's really hard to. It is. I've had the same thing it with is. me. And I've done, I did back in the 90s when Dr. Atkins, you know, Atkins, whatever book came, was refurbished. But even before that, I did the Scarsdale diet, which was the, was the first real low carb diet. I did that in high school. Clear back in the late 70s, early 80s, I was doing the low carb thing. And the one thing you can tell people that you talk to about keto diet, low carb diet, it's not sustainable. When no. I was on the low carb diet, I never felt so bad in my entire life. My skin was acne prone. I had acne. It was red and blotchy. I was lethargic and I, I lost like 50 pounds on it, but, but it came back plus it, you know, and like you say, it comes yeah. at a cost. I mean, I did it to the T, you know, cause like I'm the queen of the yo-yo diet. I had my urine sticks, <laughs> you know, and I was making sure that I was in ketosis. I had the metal mouth where you have that awful taste in your mouth. Yeah. And it was like, Oh, yeah. there's nothing you can do to get that taste Oof. out of your mouth. And it's just awful. And so I had my little urine sticks with me and I'd go to work and I'd make sure I was in ketosis and, uh, I, it was ridiculous the the amount of trouble that you have to go to and you eat tons of fat and you know so like you were saying Jean it, it comes at a cost you know your weight the scales going down but your cholesterol and triglycerides and everything are going up your bad cluster is going up your hormones get terribly out of balance because of the acidity from the the meat right there's just truly like Misty Underwood was saying you know it's meant for a temporary fix you know for maybe morbidly obese people but still you can actually 
get your body into ketosis by just fasting. It's better if you're right. that, if you're that morbidly obese, you know, in the 400 plus pound range, you need to be doing a medical juice or water supervision. fast under supervision. That's the, yeah. that's true North, true North. That's the best. True North yeah. is the best. And that's what we would recommend. We would never recommend anybody do the keto diet or low carb diet. It's just not healthy. And it comes at too much of a cost, right. too much of a cost to your health. So, just in going back to this in response to the people, you know, that, that you're not going to win and they're going to, def they're going to defend it. They're going to have all this research. And what's the point? You know, you can just say, well, it seems, you know, plant-based diet seems to be working and I'm losing weight and yep. You know, it's working for my me. My health is amazing. It's working for me. Mm -hmm. So just let them know that it's out there and just, you know, encourage them to watch, do things like watch the movie Forks Over Knives, What the Health, Plant Pure Nation, you know, all of those plant pure nation of course yep so just encourage them to watch that and yep. just say hey you might want to look at these and look at the research behind that yep and also direct them to dr mcdougall's website because mm -hmm. if you put yourself in the middle you're going to lose it's a lose lose situation right and you can also just you know nicely say you know i'm 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 losing body weight but i'm also losing my prescription medications you know i'm yeah. I, I don't have any anymore you know when i went in for yeah. my colonoscopy a few weeks ago they they were shocked that i had no i'm on no medications whatsoever no no supplements nothing right so so there's more to it that comes with this way of eating that you lose you lose a lot of weight initially and then it comes down to calorie density and you know it's a lifestyle and the thing of it is is you're right. you're losing you're gaining your health back and you're losing your dependency on prescription medications. You cannot say that when you're on the keto diet. Right. And you're frying your right. kidneys. So that was a great right. question. A uh, great question, Lauren. I, I hope we, yeah. I hope we helped you with that. And real quick, Colleen, um, call, uh, Colleen, um, I'm going to brutalize your last name and I apologize. I hate that. M Mani, M A H N E Y, Mani, Mani. Colleen asked about the, this way of eating. Her son has brain cancer. We're very sorry to hear that, um, Colleen. Ooh. So um, again, uh, with doctor's recommendations, uh, if my son or my daughter, or my grandson had any form of cancer from any type of cancer, from brain cancer to leukemia and everywhere in between, my child would be on a whole food plant-based, low fat, high carbohydrate starch based diet. And I can recommend that you um, look at Julie Marie Christensen. She's the C the founder of protective diet. She follows hers is based on McDougal's. Many of us who are doing um, coaching is all, we all come from the McDougal starch based right. uh, um, protocol, but uh, Julie Marie uh, Christensen, she just had a tumor removed from her brain two years ago. That was malignant that she's had for many years and she's done the holistic approach. She is no chemo, no radiation, and she's cancer free. She had a rough couple of right. years going through the brain's four or five surgeries and opioid addiction because of being chemically dependent on it. And, um, but plant-based all the way. I mean, you cannot well, go stop, wrong. If that was, if that were my kid, true my north. first step would either be true north. Okay. To get them to get, start getting the toxins out yep. or Gerson. Uh huh. Um, and we know one yeah. of our plant-based uh, leaders is Fran. certified. Yep. Fran. Fran. Fran, Fran Batzer. Go ahead. Fran yep. Batzer, plant-based Medford. She is right. um, one of our group leaders. And she's, like you say, is a Gershon certified trainer. But again, right. that's, that's what I would do. It would be the Gerson protocol, True North you know, right. And plant-based all and the way. And then plant-based. And then plant-based. Once you go through that and then plant-based. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. So good luck. So let's good change luck. over. Yeah. Well, Teresa Adams. Yes, please. Good luck with that. Luck. Oh my gosh. It's got to be heart wrenching. That'd wow. be a tough one. So, uh, Teresa Adams asked us to talk about a, what kind of, you know, how can your diet help with a sluggish small intestine? And we're going to defer that question because we're going to pass. Because we're so excited, we have two doctors, and I've been working with Dr. David Deneyev, and you've been working with Dr. Karen Ramshai. I'm she's a right? she's a local uh, uh, family practice doctor, and she just she just joined the the um, the uh, live broadcast. Sent her a message today, and uh, we're going to nice. be talking afterwards. So we're going to get hope to get Dr. Karen on here on Talking Tuesdays. And go ahead, Dr. Dr. David Deneyev. De wow. Blah, 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 blah. Dr. David Teneyev, 
who, if you haven't seen, I did a fantastic interview with him. He helped borough president Eric Adams to reverse his diabetes. And it was, and it's powerful. I mean, he was starting to lose his vision. He was starting to have neuropathy and he completely reversed it with just going plant-based. And then he got his mother who was 79, who has been on medication since he can remember as a small boy watching her inject insulin into her. Wow. She's been on medication for like 30 years or plus, you know, and she, he got her on that and she's almost off all her medications. Wow. So being on them for over 30 years. And, so and he, he isn't, he's, go ahead. And he was born with cerebral palsy. He was. And his family, his, his medical, his father was a doctor who helped him and they went to the hospital for special surgery and dealt with somebody who specialized in, in alternative methods because the method that they were going to do and, and use that, they would have, it would have put him in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Wow. And he's not, he goes rock climbing. I mean, my God. I have a, I mean, it's crazy. I have, a, so, I, I, have so, a, I have a second cousin who was born with cerebral palsy. So, how do you say that? Cerebral or cerebral? I've never. Cerebral. Cerebral, cerebral. Pal, cerebral palsy. And he's handicapped. He, he's, uh, you know, uh, he can get out of his wheel, uh, wheelchair, but then he has to use the arm, you know, the arm canes that go up to your arm and to your wrist. And right. so it's, uh, and yeah, it's debilitating. It's a powerful story. Yeah. So if you haven't seen the, the interview I did with him, Dr. David, Dr. David Deneyev, it's on our YouTube channel or my YouTube channel, Gene Schumacher Plant Powered. But it's also on, I posted it, I think, on the starchqueens.net website under interviews, under videos. No, it's so really it's good. And I, and I shared it in um, Plant Based Chico. And Colleen, I just saw your comment. And yes, we can give you True North, the links to True North. We'll put those um, in the comments after, mm -hmm. this, uh, after this broadcast. So Gershon Institute, the Gershon Therapy, and True North. We will definitely. And um, Dr. Karen Ramshai, who's just who uh, is watching too, she just got done doing about a month to maybe six weeks, maybe even two, eight weeks. Not sure how many weeks internship at True North. And so those are those were our family members would go if they had a cancer diagnosis. So we'll put the, right. we'll put the links in right. the comments when we're done. So um, so so anyway, it's starting to warm up. It's starting to warm up, at least here on the East Coast, thank goodness, because I cannot tell you how sick I am of being cold. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, the temperature is finally started to warm up here, and we need to start worrying about hydration. So I know. take it away, Nancy. So, yeah, so here in California, it was actually 90 degrees uh, over the weekend. It's warming up, and we got to start thinking about hydration and um, dehydration. More importantly, dehydration. So when you say hydration, Jean, what is it that you normally say? What's the normal rule of thumb that you hear everybody say and all of the health enthusiasts say? How many glasses of water are you supposed to drink in a day? No, eight. You know, eight. Eight glasses I, of water. I, was, yeah. it, was it Weight Watchers that came up with that eight, eight glasses a day or know. somewhere? So Don't I was know. trying to research that and I couldn't pinpoint where the origin is of the eight glasses of water yeah. a day comes from. But I thought it was interesting today when I was watching the Dr. Denea interview it, with you is that, you know, you don't have to get the eight to 10 glasses of water a day. And you eat, and Dr. McDougall has always said, you eat until, or drink until you have no thirst, you know? Right. So if you're not thirsty, you don't have to drink, but it is very good to be hydrated. So the first thing we want to note is that when it is, um, and there's my dog. He always barks when it's talking Tuesday with the starch queens. Oh, sorry about that, everybody. But my dog thinks he's a Rottweiler and he's like this big. So um, symptoms of dehydration are okay. knowing the color of your urine. So if your urine yeah. is very dark, you are dehydrated. You want it to be the yeah. color of like a light colored straw or hay. Uh, the color of hay, oat hay, you know, it's a very light tan. Um, if your skin is real dry, you have a rapid heartbeat. These are signs of dehydration, um, sunken eyes, and sleep. Uh, are you feeling sleepy and dizzy? These are all signs, confusion. Those are all, and you stop sweating. And so if you're going into a heat stroke mode and you stop sweating and you're dehydrated, you need to get hydrated quickly and possibly even seek medical attention because a, stro a heat stroke can be life threatening. I mean, it really, yeah. a stroke is a stroke. Yeah. And so when your body core temperature goes up, so on that note, with this time of the year, children left in cars, animals left in cars, you oh. your, your te body core temperature is going up, you're dehydrated and you literally can have what is called 
a, a heat stroke. So how can you tell if you're hydrated? So there's a couple ways. You can tell, again, like I'm saying, on the urine color, if it's the color of straw, that's good. Right. And the other is continued sweat production. So like for me, I was out walking today trying to get steps in, Miss Walker. So uh, <laughs> so I could beat you. Because <laughs> someone, someone is behind yeah. this runner oh, over there. I know. <sighs> so so I, I was sweating. It's warm out. And uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to be talking about hydration today on Ta Talking Tuesday. And I noticed I was getting perspiration. It's warm out. I was trying to get some vitamin D. So what my body was doing, it was perspiring to regulate my body temperature. That's what perspiration does. You don't sweat because right. of exertion. You're sweating and releasing moisture to bring your core temperature down. So if you're out there working in the heat of the day or exercising and you stop sweating, you're already starting to get into trouble. You need to get hydrated quickly. And then also it's called the skin turgor test. So I don't know if you can see here, but it's like I press hard down on my skin and it turns white. And if it doesn't turn back to pink, like within two seconds and bounces back, that is a sign of dehydration. It's uh, the capillary refill. So you you really need to, need to have your the color bounce back. So those are the things that we have to watch for. So how much do you drink in the water? Well, I have this gigantic hydro flask it's like 40 ounces and i can easily drink this in maybe two a day but i love yeah. to, i love to drink water and um i'm not a big tea drinker i don't drink coffee um i'll drink tea occasionally in the evenings but water good water is my most cold i like my water cold and I like, um, I like a lot of it, but that's just me. I've always been a big water drinker. Um, what are some of the great things about uh, being hydrated? It also lubricates your joints and your muscles. It enhances your mood. And you avoid kidney stones. That's a big deal. I just saw a thing on Facebook go across my Facebook page, and it was this disgusting picture of a, of a kidney that had been opened up, and it was full of kidney stones. And they said that, you know, again, you got to – you know, kind of take it with a grain of salt where this uh, comes from. But it was saying that the those energy drinks like Rockstar, Monster, Red Bull, people are drinking these for two reasons, for the, the caffeine and the sugar high. And also they're thinking they're getting, you know, hydrated. But caffeine is actually causes dehydration. So, and they also cause kidney stones. So if you're drinking these energy drinks as a way to get re dehydrated or rehydrated, you got to think again, you need to drink water, 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 water. You can have some tea, some non-caffeinated tea, and that will get you hydrated. Wine doesn't hydrate you. Beer doesn't hydrate you. Energy drinks don't hydrate you. They all have a diuretic effect because caffeine is a diuretic and that's in all those other drinks. Wine is a diuretic, beer causes, you know, you drink more and then you get dehydrated. And one of the things of being dehydrated after drinking alcohol is you get the hangover, which is the mm. last, you know, you get that hangover from that dehydration. It's kind of the same thing. If you're, um, if you're dehydrated, you have the headache, the fatigue, the body aches, that's all dehydration. So now that it's getting hot, you want to keep a good, sturdy insulated bottle of water with you drink until you are not thirsty and listen to your body signals and pay attention if you're out all day and you haven't drank and you've stopped perspiring get in the shade get to drink in water and um and uh and focus on getting cooled down and rehydrated that's really important you've got to take this really seriously Go ahead. Karen Cruz I said, do you think, do you ladies think sparkling water is still okay? No. No. Anything with bubbles in it, anything, is extraordinarily acidic. And it's one of the things that I do in, as I'm a chemistry teacher. And I have the kids, we measure, it's called ORP, oxidation reduction potential. We measure that. We also measure the pH. And the pH of the sparkling waters typically run anywhere from about three and a half to a little bit high, four, five. On the pH scale, a difference of one is, it, it, you know, like if you're going from seven to six, that's not a factor of one. That's a power of 10. 10. It's a logarithmic scale. 
So going from seven to five is a factor of a hundred. Seven to four is a factor of a thousand. Seven to three is a factor of 10,000 times more acidic than what we're supposed to be drinking. That's insane. It's crazy. It's, that's it crazy. Is. It's absolutely, it, it's definitely things, especially things like tonic water. Oh, oh. my gosh. That came in at yeah. like a low three uh, when we tested those. But yeah. the sparkling waters came in anywhere about between three and five. Right. A little over five. Right. So Bad. you're talking anywhere from a hundred to, to, to 10,000 times more acidic than, than what you're supposed to be drinking. And then, so no, no. For sparkling water, no. On that note, there's water, water, H two O. Right. So uh, there's a new product out, or maybe it's new to me. Um, that's it, Lacroix. I was just going to talk about that, Karen. L a c r o i x. And my daughter has it, uh, like a twelve pack of it, on her dining room table. And I took uh, a taste of it. I wanted to see what it tastes like. I go, Cassie, what's in that? She said, Oh, it's just sparkling water. And of course, my radar went up. It's what? And um, I took a taste of it. It tasted terrible. I didn't like it. It was peach flavored. Um, but it's very acidic. And so people are drinking this LaCroix water. I see people carrying these cans everywhere. And they're acidic and they're not hydrating. They're not hydrating. Right. You're wasting okay. your money. Wasting your money. So, and you're along with, go ahead. And um, so on that note, since they're acidic, what's that doing to your kidneys? Oh yeah, yeah. You're stressing them out. Mm -hmm. You really are. Yeah, kidney stones. You're you have to you have to alkalize that before it can go into your bloodstream. Right. So that that so, was a good question. So um, hydrate, yeah. hydrate. Listen to your body. Listen to the symptoms. Keep your pets and your children out of hot cars, and uh, they're gonna. They're, it's a very rapid dehydration and heat stroke possibility. So uh, that was a good question. Hydrate. What's up? Well, next, and Jean? coming into well, just following on the theme of it, it's warming up. Uh, we had a question that came in about sunscreen mm. and who asked this? Oh, Susan Davis said it's melanoma month and I keep seeing posts on Facebook about wearing sunscreen, but you've mentioned that we shouldn't use products with zinc. What brand should we buy? Uh, okay. Let's back up for a Wait, second. Can I do Even a timeout real quick? Uh, the, is this the same zinc that I used to, you know, the lifeguards in the seventies, we'd put the white over our nose and those, yes. those cute, those yes. super cute lifeguards would have the white nose. And my, yes. my cousin Pam is watching and we even had the tube of the white zinc and we would do the whole stripe over it. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. We aren't yeah. just one giant melanoma. Well, well, and here's the problem with that. You know, back in the day, as you said, we had that Casper, the friendly ghost face. Right. And we're like, yeah, this is not very attractive. No. So, you know, the we started making noise like, hey, can you like make this disappear into our skin? So we're still protected, but it's okay. So we'll, I'm going to circle around back to the zinc in a minute because okay. I think there's something that's even worse that you need to be careful about. And if you go on to the EWG, the Environmental Working Group, um, they have, first of all, a whole listing of on sunscreens. So they've got a whole document, you know, article written about sunscreens and what you should look for and what to, what to avoid. And of course they have the rating scale on a scale of one to 10. They rate their products in terms of that. So that's a good place to start from. So I always use that as a, as a base, but then, you know, I start using my head and researching the chemicals that are still in that. So one of the biggest chemicals that, that of concern to me in sunscreens is called oxybenzone. And on the EWG scale, they not only rate the products, but they rate chemicals as well on a scale of one to 10. Oxybenzone rates a scale on a scale of one to 10 an eight, wow. eight out of 10. Okay. And wow. this is in the majority of sunscreen products. So you really, and it's not just sunscreen, it's in a lot of other personal care products. Um, but the oxybenzone is boom, 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 boom. So let me see that. The oxybenzone in the personal care products, first of all, on the, according to the EWG, it is, it's known for biochemical or cellular level changes. That means, let me translate that. That means it's changing your DNA. Okay. Could that be a problem? Houston, I think that's a problem. Okay. And it's legal. It's an well, and it's an endocrine disruptor, 
So your endocrine runs all and regulates all the hormones in your body. So if it's disrupting that, you think that could be a problem? One would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it also is known for organ system toxicity, not only your regular organs, but reproductive organs as well. And the one I think that is most disturbing is called persistence and bioaccumulation. Wow. So that means it's staying in your body. And it says and that? And then it starts to... It says that in the ingredients and all that, persistence... Biocumulative? Yeah. Oh, my God. On EWG. In the EWG. So if you wow. Go, so if you go on the EWG, and I cannot say enough about this. This is oh, the yeah, Environmental no, Working Group. That's a great website. Org. Yeah. Great website. So definitely go look up your sunscreen on there and choose one that's safe. So going back to, and circling back to the zinc, because you asked about the zinc in this, in this question initially, but I'm more concerned about oxybenzone than the zinc. Wow. When we, back in the day in the seventies, whatever, we used to have that white zinc. It used to be zinc oxide that we used zinc oxide or what was the other one? Tit titanium dioxide. Oh, that I remember that one. That one. We used. Yeah. Yeah. So we used either one of those things. So, okay, fine. But what happened is the, we were like, we don't like this being, you know, like looking like Casper, the friendly ghost. So can you make it disappear? And they listened. So what they did is they ground it up and made it into, it's called nanoparticles. So the nanoparticles go right through the skin and into and bioaccumulate in your body. Wow. So, and we just did, I'm working with Dr. Neil Barnard doing a series called Power Food for the Brain. And he talks about zinc in the body and that that is one of the pieces. If you have too much, now you need to have zinc in your body. There's no question about it. But, and I'm not quite sure if the zinc oxide is going to be storing and causing this issue, but I do want to get this out there because he talks about this a lot in the book. If you've not read the book, Power Food for the Brain, I strongly recommend it. We're on part three of a part series. And he talks about zinc being the nucleus, almost like a, what do I want to say? Almost like an oyster. Yeah, oyster. Has, protect, you know, the, 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 you get a sand grain in the, inside the oyster and it starts putting this protective coating. So it, it's protecting, the oyster is protecting itself from the sand grain. And it's kind of like that. So zinc, our body to protect us from the zinc is creating this fat layer and it's called beta amyloid plaques and it starts to accumulate in your brain. So I don't know, maybe this is a good question for the doctor to research, is will that zinc oxide start to work towards accumulation of beta amyloid plaques in the brain. So that's a very good question for that. So if you're looking so we'll for a sunscreen. for the doctor. We'll we will. Our doctor series. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We'll write that one down. Yeah. Mm, doctor coming, doctor series. I'm so excited about this. Anyway, the, um, no, oh, now I lost my train of so thought. So the zinc on the brain and the bio, bio, Man. bio amyloid plaques, you know, the, are they the beta, amyloid, beta plaques. amyloid plaques and are they, is the zinc that yeah, we okay. put oh, topi yeah, yeah, yeah. topical okay. zinc. So, you know, I recommend you going to the EWG and looking up sunscreen. Now you can search on the EWG website and you can search for a topic and they range, they sort them on a scale of one to 10. So they usually give you the lowest first, but I just want to put it out there that Pure Haven makes a sunscreen and they don't use the nanoparticles. So you want to make sure that your whatever sunscreen that you're using is not nanoparticles because they're the big macro particles can't go through the skin. You know, they don't go through. They, wow. they stay on top. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're using something that's not using the nanoparticles. So whatever you choose, go to the EWG. Make sure it doesn't have oxybenzone or, or any of the toxic chemicals. They have a list on the EWG website of on sunscreens. So please, please, please. That's one of the biggest things. And you can do other things to help you. You know, sunscreen should be the last resort. You can use, there's actually clothing that provides the same amount of sunscreen that you can use. So wearing that, you know, especially if you don't want to get these toxins into your system. Yeah. So. Well, my husband, you know, okay. my husband's had melanoma um, uh, removed on his face. And so we uh, actually saw at Costco last year where they had the UVA, um, clothing so of course we just right. stocked up i bought like five or six of the shirts and a couple pairs of the pants and so when he's outdoors he just wears the uva U, is it uva uvb um skin or shirt and it's supposed to you know pretty much block out all those rays right and so right. that's and we got him the hat we got him the uv hat and so now he's just like you know um a moon martian when we go out hiking so you know let's <laughs> try <laughs> Trying to keep all that all sun right. off of his 
body because of the melan right. damn melanoma month. So uh, that's a good topic. And zinc, oh, sunscreen, all of these things, these chemicals, these personal care products, they drive me crazy. They just put way too many chemicals in them. And when you say my right. DNA is going to be affected, I was like, whoa, stop the bus. That's not going to happen. So, I mean, right. it's just, yeah, yeah, it's a big bummer on all of these things. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. So someone asked, and I don't have this because I forgot to print that out, that piece. Who asked about the water filters? That was Hen, um, Helen. Let me look. Uh, Helen Carlson. She asked about the water filters. She asked, Helen right. asked, is Britta... Okay, she says, is a Brita countertop pitcher good enough to ensure I'm drinking clean water? She says she uses tap water, and it's slippery to touch. Well, that's weird. She says that, um, that the, the, the water where she's at now isn't good like the tap water from New York City. And I thought that's kind of interesting because I, I don't remember when I was in New York City, the tap water being very good. But, Jean... Brita water filters. Now, they're a carbon okay. filter, right? Well, uh, and I'm not going to get into Brita versus Any other types of, them, of filters. Right. I, think, I think, you know, first of all, let me. you, you got to do your homework, first of all. And I found just in a quick Google search, I found um, there was a site from uh, Penn State University. This was a uh, article titled Brita, Harmful or Helpful? So I might, I'm going to direct you to read that. That was a really good reference there. There was also a website called Consumer Affairs, and I'm not quite oh, sure yeah. about the origin of that one, um, but they had a lot of issues with people using Brita filters. So you might want to, you know, I'm going to direct you over there. The bigger question is you need to understand the source of your water. So um, I think it's the only federally or the only water that's regulated is the water that comes out of your tap. So that's the only thing that's federally regulated. So when you start to look at the water coming out of that, you can go to your municipality, your town government website, and they usually post, and I think they do it quarterly. I can't remember if it's quarterly or annually or whatever, but they have to post what's in the water. So they do an analysis of the water testing. So you want to look at the chemicals that are in your water. And so for my house, what I did, because I live in the state of New York, and what I did is I went to my my town website and I looked at the chemicals that are in there so it's more important that you want to treat the water for the chemicals that are in there now obviously if you have a well that's a whole different you know can of worms but if you're taking tap water coming out you want to make sure that you're dealing the filtration system that you set up is one that's going to deal with the majority of the issues in your water your water per se now I have in my house I have a four-stage filtration system that the water comes in and it goes through four, four stages. And each one of those stages is designed in the filtration system to deal with certain <coughs> things in my water. Okay. So, and so you have to look at the water source. You have yeah. to look at the source and see what chemicals that you're dealing with. Cause that's the bigger piece here. So I'm not going to say where the Brita or not, I'm not going to get to that level look at the source of your water. That's the most mission critical because this is something that we're going to be, you know, before we used to fight over the oil, now we're going to be fighting over water yeah, and, and potable water yeah. because our water system and our watershed has become so toxic and not only toxic, but extraordinarily acidic. Right. And so the water, like, you know, and, and bottled waters, some of these bottled waters are really acidic. Yeah. Most of them are. And all the ones that I've tested, I've only come across like one or two that have actually had a pH above seven. Wow. Majority of them are acidic. Wow. So even if you're drinking bottled water, you think you're, you're doing something good for yourself. No, no. There's a lot of chemicals that are in these. So yeah. Yeah. yeah I Test know. the water source and deal with the water source first. And, and on so. that note, the company that I work for, we have um, an, in, a, a well, we have actually an ag well, but it is within the jurisdiction of the city of Chico. So um, being in the position that I'm in, I get all of the uh, the county and the state reports on our well. You wouldn't believe the level of uh, monitoring that our well goes through. And I about had a, you know, in that movie, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, when the bug eyes go out of your eyes. And when I see that, uh, <laughs> oh, 
I mean, I'm not kidding you. I was like, what? So it was like, what hexachro hexavalent chromium six? I didn't say that right. Hex six. That's the Aaron Brockovich movie. And it's like, mm. and they're talking, it wasn't in our well, but they were talking about broadly over, you know, the city of Chico and the levels of hex six and all of these other chromiums that are in the water. Um, it was very scary, very scary. Well, it's not just the water. I mean, it's the toxins that we're putting into the thing. I mean, if you go back and look, because I teach environmental science and one of the classics is it's called Love Canal and it's in upstate oh, New York. Oh, yeah, that's bad. I know. I know. So basically there was a, you know, a chemical uh, a plant, a yeah. physical plant that was dumping a lot of the toxins out onto the property. I remember that. And then the company, you know, I think either shut down or went bankrupt or was sold or whatever, but the land got sold and these contractors bought the land and then they started building these, you know, beautiful homes on the land and then people moved in and then got sick and everybody got sick. And everybody got sick in different, different yeah. issues. Yeah, I so, think that was a, wasn't that part of the a super fun cleanup? And wasn't, didn't John Travolta um, and William H. Macy do a, I mean, it's a docu, that's a true space, a movie based on the true story of the Love Canal. No, and I'm the lawsuit. That. Oh, yeah. I did not know yeah, that. I'm pretty sure there is. It was no, based it's, on a true story. It's, you know, so you don't know what, what you know, or, or the issues. Like, and I come from a little town in, in Connecticut, and there is, within this town, it used to be a mining town. Back in the mid to late 1800s, and in certain areas of the town, there are what is called cancer pockets. And people that I grew up with that are my age, that went to the same school as me, because they lived in these cancer pockets, they're all dead. Wow. If you go back and look at in the, in the homes that are in this area, it's because they're over these mines, and all these toxins are, are coming up to the surface and causing issues with people living over these things. So you may not know the source of where you're living and the issues that you could be doing, you know. So before you buy a house, you might want to do a little research on the area, right. on water quality, you know. Yep. These are kind of important mission critical issues. Right. So. And that's because the Starch Queen's approach to lifestyle is the trifecta. Jean, give us the trifecta. The trifecta means you have to change what goes in. So that's the food. That's the drink. You have to change your environment. So like the personal care products, the toxins that you're being exposed to, and you have to move. And your fitness. You've got to move it, move it, move it, move it. Yeah. Yep. So, so, so that's what we call a trifecta. Not to say that there's not other, other points like meditation, things like that. Yep. Yes. But we, we think these are the big three. Right. You I, know, I mean, yeah. The big points. We're all listening in here. We have a lot of people that are not plant-based that are watching that are plant-based and in varying degrees and they're in the journey. But we go to a lot great links to, to pay attention to what we're eating, making sure we're eating, right. you know, plants, legumes, you know, fruits, vegetables, and all of that. But we really seriously need to give just as much attention to our water. Our water is a big thing and it's getting more and more and more contaminated. And because of mm -hmm. all of people that flush their, you know, their prescription medications down the drain and they go out into the ground, then we're, we're just, you know, we're just shooting ourselves in the foot and we're contaminating our water supply and our soil. Right. It's just really getting ugly. So that was a really good question. It is. And on that he we, we really we are we, we, crazy. Really did, we really didn't answer your question <laughs> also i can tell you personally from my experience with the brito filter is it just removed the chlorine flavor the floor the yeah it did nothing to the quality of the water other than it just removed the chlor the taste of the chlorine now i don't know i mean again i'm on municipal water here and um i yeah you just there's a lot to know so, about water Talking about water and washing, um, the same person, and I can't think of the name because um, I didn't copy that down, my bad, who asked about should we use baking powder? No, not baking no, that powder, was, baking soda. That was he. That was he, he Len. Um, she asked. I'll, I'll right. just read it real quick. Uh, he Len asks, yep. uh, do you also recommend using baking soda to wash fruits and vegetables and rinsing rice and legumes to remove arsenic? Okay. Well, Here's the problem. I mean, arsenic is, you know, like the, the, there's that big thing about arsenic in the rice right now. And one of the things, and the arsenic coming in from the rice is from like the, in the South, they used a lot of arsenic in terms of growing cotton and that's still in the soil. So if they're growing and they started to switch over to, to grow 
rice in the South. So it's absorbing a lot of the arsenic. So uh, Dr. McDougall says if you boil the rice and just cook it like very much like a pasta and then rinse it, that a lot of the arsenic goes out. But you also want to make sure that you're checking the source of, of the food. Mm -hmm. But she asked, should we use baking soda to wash our fruits and vegetables? So it, there's a couple of things that you can use to wash your fruits and vegetables. The problem is, even if you're buying organic food, which I pretty much, that's all, pretty much all I buy is organic. Me too. And it still uses a pesticide. It's an organic pesticide, but they're still using a pesticide. So that's oil-based, and that's going to be sticking on your food and your vegetables. So if you just rinse it or wash it with water, water has a pH more, more or less around 7. If you're just taking tap water and washing it off, it's not going to do a whole lot. So... There's a couple things that you can do. One is to use a salt water solution. So you're causing the stuff to come out of the cells. So it's trying to make the salt water less concentrated. So it's leaching out some of the things. So you can put that in there. That's pretty effective of getting some of the, some of the stuff out. Uh, vinegar is another one that you can do. You're just making it, again, it's a different way of, you know, you're dealing with a salt solution. This is dealing with an acid. So vinegar is an acid. Um, so, but the problem with a vinegar solution, washing it in that, your, your food's going to absorb a little bit of the vinegar and it's going to have that vinegary taste. And yeah. you're okay with that, whatever. Not my favorite. But the baking soda, you're putting baking soda and all you're doing is making the water basic. So that's what the basing, baking soda does. It dissolves quite well in water because water's polar. It's a polar molecule. It can pull apart the baking soda quite well. And it's going to help to raise the pH. So... Instead of, for me, the way I do it at my house, I have a machine called the Congdon machine. And so with a touch of a button, I can change the pH of the water that I'm washing my veggies with. You know, so what I do is I change it to 11.5, which is a very, very high pH, which is what you're doing with the baking soda, is you're raising the pH. So I'm really raising the pH on my produce, and it actually emulsifies the oil. It breaks it apart. So I, I, that's what you're trying to I, do. I witnessed that when I was back at Cape Cod. I saw that when I was washing the fruits and vegetables. It, it's true. I, I, I take my Congen machine traveling. Yep. I'm not kidding. Yep, I would. I do. I would. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty portable. You can, you know, take it along and connect it to most water faucet systems. Anyway, so that's your, the answer to that is to, yeah, you, you definitely want to wash your, your produce. You know, baking soda's not bad. But you're still dealing with it and you have to rinse it off. You know, obviously you want to make sure that you rinsed off all the baking soda or the salt or the vinegar, whatever you're going to use to, to wash that. So, so Kathy Anderson says, doesn't baking soda have a lot of sodium in it or is that baking powder? They both do. Mm -hmm. They both do. Yep. Baking, powder, baking soda is sodium hydrogen carbonate. Hydrogen. Right. Yep. And right, but you're going to rinse it off. So does, that, it, does any of that absorb into the, into the produce? No, because it's coming out. The stuff's coming out. It's, it's and you're pushing it out. Through. Right. It's okay. pushing out there. Okay. All right. So. so no. All right. Well, that's a good question. Well, that is um, awesome. Those are great questions. We have another uh, question that I wanted to stay on He Len to, to um, complete that. She had something that she said is off topic, but I think it's worth mm. talking about um, because it's so common in so many people. And so Helen says she mentions she's tired in the afternoon and doesn't want to consume caffeine. Um, she was like, dark chocolate has caffeine in it. So, so what is, what, why is Helen, you know, tired in the afternoon? Well, there could be a number of reasons. I'll throw my um, two cents in there. So for me, uh, when you're getting, there's what I call the four o'clock, um, uh, the three to four o'clock hour is when most people go into this zombie state. Take me to the junk machine, the Franken food uh, snack machine. Yeah. You know, it's like right. your blinders are on. And it's like, oh my God, I've got to eat something because I'm crashing. You know, my lunch was probably super um, refined carbohydrates like bread and pasta or, you know, a, a yucky cold cut sandwich. And so four hours later, your body's going crash. And so you're seeking another fix. And so you go straight to the snack machine. Well, we have in the Starch Queens program, and it's very common in the whole food plant-based uh, network of, 
of uh, organizations and groups is what's called the potato hour. So have a healthy snack with you, Helen, at all times. It's really important mm -hmm. to have a potato, a cup of rice, a cup of oatmeal, and have, um, have a few blueberries on it. You're only looking at like 150 calories. You're giving yourself a complex carbohydrate. You're giving yourself the good for you um, energy that your brain needs to stay awake. I mean, when you're feeding your brain the energy that it needs, um, you're going to be energized. And the, the potato hour is a really popular um, part of our program. So pack a potato, have a really, you know, cute um, handbag cooler with you and keep a couple potatoes with you. Or you can even mm -hmm. get those pre-made um, uh, microwavable rice or oatmeal. Keep those in your cupboard at work. Um, always have something for you in the afternoon. And then, of course, I always have to go back, and Gina always goes back to how are you sleeping? If you're crashing in the afternoon, we look at your food, we look at what you're drinking, and we look at your sleep patterns. So if your sleep patterns are just not good, you know, and you're getting too tired, then you've got to look at address the sleep. Are you pre -peri are you perimenopausal? Are you menopausal? Are you facing insomnia? Are you taking prescription medications that are causing insomnia? My mom took a lot of prescription medications and the side effects were insomnia and some of them were, you know, drowsiness. So, so she was on this, you know, merry-go-round of things, you know, sleep during the day, be awake all night. It, it's just a terrible situation and I feel for you if you're well, tired. And if you're wearing a Fitbit or I think the Apple phone does it I too. Got, I, got I, got got the Fit I got both on the Fitbit. I got both. But the Fitbit will, and, and I think the iPhone, doesn't the iPhone track your sleep too? Yep. yep. So both of them will track your sleep patterns. So you can look at the data, and I found this absolutely fascinating, and it shows you how many times you're restless throughout the night, how many times you're awake. And I don't remember this stuff. I mean, you know, apart from getting up to pee, yeah. you know, I don't remember. Yeah. So, I, you know, I don't think I'm awake. I think I went to sleep, you know. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, especially I after my hike. Yeah, we, we went hiking up uh, uh, this mountain called Sleeping Giant in Connecticut. So I took my stepdaughter and her boyfriend there, and uh, the elevation climb is is. I mean, you're going from like up, <laughs> you're going straight up. You, like you, you. I saw your mountain that you posted the picture. Look, you were doing some mountaineering. Yeah. You are mountaineering. So, so, but, but Helen, the, the bottom line is, is go back and really look at what you're eating. Look yeah. how you're sleeping. What are you drinking? And because the body is designed to sleep, you know, we must sleep. That's part of what we do in our life. You have to, you have to sleep. So it's usually something, some habit, something that we're eating, something that we're drinking, an activity. Are we, you know, are you exercising? I found that if I exercised late at night, I couldn't sleep. And if I was awake at one o'clock in the morning, I was exhausted the next day. If you're crashing from food, make sure you're eating complex carbohydrates, sweet potatoes, brown rice, grown in California, not down South. <laughs> you know, you're, you're not getting the caffeine highs and lows. Hydrate. If you're dehydrated, also causes lethargy. So those are all the reasons that you can have that afternoon crash. But always have a potato with you. Pack a potato everywhere you go. The potato hour. But the potato hour. We love I it. Was at, I was at the Brooklyn Borough President, Eric Adams. They, I drove into Brooklyn. I, I braved driving into Brooklyn. There's just no easy way to get to Brooklyn. And I drove in last night to Brooklyn because they have this vegan. Hey, Nick, um, will you bring me one of your cooked potatoes? Sorry, I'm going to do a little experiment. <laughs> okay. So I drove into the Brooklyn borough and I had a couple of potatoes in my purse and I just pulled them out and said, Hey, anybody want a potato? And they were looking at me like I was insane. <laughs> I mean, like I just pulled it out and I started eating it like an apple. Exactly. I just, yeah, I, They're yep. so good. They're so they good. I know. They're awesome. Well, especially if you put a little bit of mustard on them. Oh, yeah. Okay, yep. now you're talking. Exactly. And the, I'm going to put a shout out to this um, Viracha. Viracha oh, I sauce. Looked that up on, I looked that up on Amazon. That looks good. Oh, my God. The specs are amazing. It's low in sodium, low in sugar. And it is awesome. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I do. I just start eating it. And let me tell you how, how much that fills you up, number one. And number two, the energy you get from it is absolutely fantastic. This is, and Kathy the, Anderson, this is the best thing to take when you're running or cycling long distance. Yeah. 
they pack, yeah. they pack. You, you can have these things outside for three hours and they don't go bad. They're so good. Yep. This is going to give you well, more energy than a Red Bull. Well, Sustaining, that, sustainable, we, sustainable energy. Yeah. And I packed a, a bag for everybody to take on our hike. And we had little food moments where we stopped, you know, we enjoyed the, we sat down on the, when we got to the peak, we sat down and, and had our potato, we ate our potatoes mm-hmm. and, and uh, it was awesome. Yep. But Kathy Anderson said her potatoes were icky this week. Um, so what we do is I cook my potatoes in, I, I scrub them and get them clean and then I put them in the instant pot and I put them on one to two minutes on manual. That's it. And then let them go. And then I pull the pot out and I put them on a cooling rack and I let them cool down. And then I just stick them, stand them up in the refrigerator in an open glass, in an open glass jar and just (laughs) put them in there. And I have them for the, you know, usually they, I cook them for three or four days. So, yeah, we, we literally uh, have the six quart and the eight quart instant pot and I'll scrub up a five pound bag and we'll put the whole thing in there. My husband, Nick, was mm-hmm. like, how can you, you know, all these years we've been plant-based, but it wasn't until we started really getting these weight loss, um, our 10-day challenges and our Starch Queen challenges going, and I was starting to talk about, you know, having these cooked potatoes as a snack. He's, right. like, he's like, that would be so disgusting. And I said, just try it. And he was like, he's in love with them. He takes these to work. He's losing weight. Yeah. Since he's been doing the potato snacks, um versus like fruit like we would be he'd take a big bowl of watermelon or a bunch of grapes but now he's taking these he's lost like another 10 pounds so these are very weight loss promoting these are not evil they're super good for you full of vitamins somebody C. asked somebody asked it, how can you carry those if you're running a half marathon oh in my pouch i i have a backpack or i have my uh, waist belt and you can put one or two in there. And I also like the fingerling potatoes. So the fingerling mm. potatoes are much smaller. And so I'll put two or three dates. I'll take this, I'll de- take the pit out of a date. Those are like for really long distances where I want to get some sugar in me. And the fingerling potatoes are literally bite size. And you just put them in your um, hydration pack or your hydration belt and you're good to go. You only need like a half a cup because you get so much energy from them and it's a great yeah, clean energy. Amazing. Super good. So Jean, we have one, uh, it's getting already six o'clock. We have one last question on transitioning to a whole food plant base. It's kind of a long question. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to really go through it quickly. Um, Sherry asked um, a question came in from the, from our, um, from our starch Queens Facebook page. She wants to know what she can say to her uncle because her uncle has severe heart disease and he's eating basically the standard American diet. And she's trying to tell him and show him and convince him that just by going plant-based within 72 hours, you're going to have improved health. So I know personally from seeing Dr. Eshelstein live, you know, give a lecture in person, listen to Dr. McDougall, is that when you remove fat, the, the meat and dairy from your diet, people who've had crippling angina see improvement within within a matter of of a day or two their angina is greatly reduced because the fat that's in this bloodstream you're reducing the velocity of you're increasing the velocity of your blood and so your the constriction in your chest is decreasing so their um, angina, angina is improving greatly the other thing is your gut health well, this is pretty interesting according to dr terry walls the bacteria in your gut is dividing every 20 minutes. So what does that mean? You're either continually fertilizing the health-promoting bacteria or you're fertilizing the disease-promoting bacteria minute by minute. So what you put into your body is, you know, your gut health is so important. So you're either, yes, what it goes, absolutely. it goes back to you're either feeding disease or you're, or you're promoting your, you know, it's one of the, I like what, I like what the doctor said in your interview on um, everything. Every time you look at food, you need to look at it as an energy source. Mm-hmm. It's an energy source. And is so that beneficial? goes. Is it beneficial? Is it beneficial? Is it beneficial? Or not. Or it's not. Right. And so what else happens when you adopt a whole food plant-based lifestyle? So there's the gut brain connection. So there's that. So you start getting more mental clarity. You, um, you have, uh, micro, let's see. So it says here, uh, 
the difference between grabbing a bagel, a, this is standard American diet food versus a potato, the refined grains are act in your brain like sugar. So again, you want to look at the refined grains. But most importantly, within three days, you're moving, removing cholesterol. You're removing a, a lot of cholesterol from your um, bloodstream and you're improving your cardiovascular health. That's huge. Especially, you know, with her uncle who has severe heart disease, you got to remove the meat, you got to remove the high fat diet, because that is the key element to heart disease. So when you're removing that, you're, you're all, your body wants to heal all the time. You can either, you can start promoting health with your very next meal and your body responds extremely quickly to, to the, to the, the power foods, the plant-based foods, your body will mm -hmm. immediately start healing. It cannot heal when you keep putting in the, um, the disease promoting food. So the body is trying to, like Jean was saying, making those beta amyloid plaques. It's trying to, you know, contain the fire. It's trying to keep that fire disease under control versus having the fuel to go in and reverse the disease and be, you know, healing. So it's really, really amazing how fast the body can heal when provided the proper source, the proper fuel. And, and it does. I mean, it truly happens quickly. I, rec I really recommend when it comes out on DVD, you see the movie Eating You Alive. It, you know, it talks, there's one gentleman in the movie who has high cholesterol and heart disease, and they talk about how quickly his body responded to going whole food plant-based. And yeah, I they also tell talk about that in Forks Over Knives and Plant oh, Pure yeah, Nation. Oh, yeah, all of them. And, yeah. All of them. All what of the them. health. Yeah. What the health. And so yeah. I, I, if I get somebody that I'm talking to that is really resistant to plant-based, um, and you know, my dad had severe heart disease, two open heart surgeries, 11 bypasses, um, congestive heart failure, you know, everything. Wow. He had every heart disease there was. Um, had we known then what we know now, I believe my dad would have been very open to the, to the plant-based lifestyle. But for those who are resistant, they think, well, you know, I'm macho and I need to barbecue, try it for a week because literally you can see a huge improvement in 72 hours and you can see yeah. even a threefold improvement on that within a week. So, right. you know, I always tell everybody you can do anything for a week, you know, try a yep. week. And if, and if the, um, if the improvement isn't noticeable in a week, you got to keep going again right. under the, under the supervision of a doctor always. Um, but again, when you're just giving up meat and dairy, you're not doing anything extreme. That is not considered extreme. You're right. giving your body the high nutrition that it needs, that right. it requires. So, so let's talk question. about, yeah, that's a great question. Let's talk about what's going on with the starch queens. Yeah. Because we've had the awesome. beans and greens challenge this month in the starch queens. So take it away, Nancy. Yep. So this month, last month was our no refined grains challenge. And we had our, you know, our shining star, Susan Cooper, who had saw amazing benefits in her body from reducing refined grains. And this month we're doing greens and beans. So we're uh, doing a 30 day challenge. So two servings of greens and a serving of beans, because we want to again to in the program to keep pulling back the layers of food and how food meaning meaning plant-based foods react to individual bodies because right. Susan was very sensitive to refined grains and she's also seeing great success now with uh, her body shrinking to having the in increase in nutrients and phytonutrients from the greens and the resistant starch from the beans. So she's removing, and, and go ahead. Yeah. And Lisa, Lisa is also in our program. She's dropped a whole pant size. Yes. So, and she yeah. started using the Fitbit and she's starting yep. to move it, move, move, it, move it, move it, move it, move it. Move it. So, yep. so with th great things are happening in the Starch Queens program where right. Jean and I are so blessed and so honored to have um, our group members in there. And we're really helping everybody, you know, find their health destiny. And it's, we're, we're doing our best we can to make it fun educational. The education topics are amazing. Um, great program. You can check us out at sqweightloss.com. Again, sqweightloss.com. All right. Jean, Jean, what book are you reading? Oh God. I'm still on breaking the food seduction and no, no make. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I'm not saying anything. It's a big book. I know it is. Well, <laughs> I do because I'm researching it, but I also started picking up 
uh, the other night. This surfaced when I was cleaning, <laughs> getting ready for fam friends to come over. Family oh, there's that book I'm reading. There's a fast food genocide. So oh. I started, you know, picking that up, and that's well, amazing. That um, is so like, I started uh, reading. I've read it before, but you know, I was just picking up pieces of of that. Yeah. So what are you reading? We got to get Dr. Furman on. You got to get Dr. Furman in to, in to uh, interview him. Chef AJ, Chef AJ's interview with Dr. Furman on fast food genocide was a really good interview. Oh my God. And he especially was like, talking. I thought he was going to oh. start foaming at the mouth. Oh, he, he was just crazy passionate. And I love I that. And I love that he yeah. was so passionate about how men and women who are in the childbearing age and if they're wanting to conceive, they both need to be plant based for a good solid six months before they try to conceive. If you haven't read Fast Food Genocide by Dr. Furman, you got to read it. It is the okay. best book. So what are you reading? I am reading, it's called Food Junkies. It is a food, it's a book on eating disorders. Uh, it's called Food Junkies, The Truth About Food Addiction by Dr. Vera Tarman and Phil Wordle. So this is, goes into the psychological aspect. You know me, I like to get into your head. I like to mm -hmm. understand um, why and our, our relationship with food and how it affects us. And so this book I'm finding is very in depth on the psychological side of it. And, um, you know, I got done with, you know, uh, my, how the Ed book, that one, and then never binge again. And so I really find it fascinating, these food addiction books, because a lot of, a lot of doctors don't believe that food addiction is like a drug addiction or an alcohol addiction. There is still controversy there. And so that's what I find in, you know, very interesting. And with us being, you know, coaching, being health coaches, um, I feel that it's my responsibility to truly understand food addiction and being a food addict um, in the sense of an emotional eater, you know, a stress eater that I want to understand it not only for myself and, you know, I've had great success. I've lost 105 pounds, but it's not come easy because you still battle those, those food demons at every turn. I don't ever oh have God. any desire. I will never eat anything that's not plant-based. I'll never go back to dairy. I'll never go back to um, meat um, or, you know, donuts. I mean, there's just, there's just too much disease there, but I would eat more, um, more volume. I'm a volume eater. And so that, that goes hand in hand with my life of, you know, stress eating. So it's just like that whole bottomless pit. And that is a form of food addiction. So mm -hmm. understanding that and putting two and two together makes it a lot easier to understand yeah. and to share. And there's a lot of time that goes into reading these books and educating Ooh. ourselves on this. Yeah. And, um, and I love it. I, I just love it. So a great book. I highly recommend it called Food Junkies, The Truth About Food Addiction by Dr. Vera Tarman and Phil Wordle. And um, uh, I'm super excited about getting through that the rest of the way. So, okay. Favorite right. products. I'm going to start because we've been talking about Cheers. hydration. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about hydration, staying hydrated because it's starting to get warm. We talked about sunscreen. But one of the things that can happen is when you go out into the sun, you get burnt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Especially when in the beginning of the season, your skin's not ready to roll. Okay. So this is by far my absolute favorite product from Pure Haven Essentials. This is called the Boo Boo Stick. I am not kidding. It is my favorite. And at any given time, I have at least one in the, in the bathroom, on the nightstand, in my purse, in the car, by the stove, because I'm cooking and I'm always burning myself, you know, in, in some way, shape or form. Because like when I do the cooking videos and stuff like that, you're trying to do 15 things at once and it's like, ooh, that pain was hot. Anyway, if you burn yourself, a sunburn or a, a you know, burn from cooking, put this on. My stepdaughter had a horrible burn. Oh she yeah, you woke told me about up, that. Yeah, she woke up in the middle of the night. She was having a nightmare, and she rolled out of bed and hit the steam radiator. It was going full blast, and in she lives in Manhattan, and it was just absolutely horrific. Oh, yes. So we took down this and yeah. some Nemo to her, and she used those two products to help heal her body. And they put a progression of it with like in two weeks. That it was really, really amazing how quickly it healed. But you can use this for pain. It's like seriously. How old are you when a pillow hurts you sleeping at night? I mean, how, how bad do you have to be? So I put some of this on my neck, you know, if my neck gets hurt. Um, right there. 
What do you do? What do we got here? <laughs> sorry, sorry. So Nick, Nick asked. Nick came in and want to know if we wanted to show what his famous plant-based pizza looks like. Ooh. So, so Nick just makes these amazing plant-based pizzas. This is an Engine Two crust from the okay. Engine Two product line. It's whole grain, uh -huh. and um, and so does that look like a pizza you turned down? Oh my God! Stop yeah. it! I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah I'm it's amazing. Mm. Yeah, that's my, my that's my husband. He's my plant based gourmet chef. Yes, he is. Yes, You're lucky because mine yeah. can't boil water. Uh, so anyway, yeah. my favorite so, product, the Boo Boo Stick. It helps. It's got a tremendous amount of arnica, and it helps for inflammation. It helps to uh, burns, cuts, scrapes. Um, when it, we went on a community service project, we were cleaning out the river, and we were in waders up to like here. And oh, lots of trash big job. But all these insects were like buzzing mm -hmm. around us and we got like these welts on us that were like raised. They were about the size of a nickel and they were welts and raised up. I, I never saw anything bite me or felt it bite me, but the welts that raised up. Oh my God. Well, I had my boo-boo stick in my, my waders inside the pocket in my jeans. I pulled that out. I didn't have any problems, but the kids, when they got back to the bus, oh my God. They're welts, and I wasn't going to give them my boo stick. <laughs> yeah, no. But I was. I didn't have issues. Mine went down. By the time we got back to the bus, all my, my bites back to normal. Boo-boo stick, amazing. The other one that I absolutely have come to really love, they just released this not too long ago. This is called the Comfort Oil. And this is an oil um, that I use, like, when I get out of the shower, I'll rub it all over my body or kind of get out of, uh, like, a, you know, if I, like my husband will sometimes come in and give me a massage on the back. If my back is aching, he'll, we'll use that as a nice massage oil. Or if your muscles are like tired or tense, it's, it's kind of gentle warming, I think. Not a lot, but just a gentle warming. And it's just amazing. I, I'm, I'm falling in love with this. And I've already gone through two bottles and I need to order more. But hey, comfort oil. If he, he, he can only boil water, but if he gives good back massages, go Carl. Good score. I know, right? So, yeah. I'm going to have right. to order some of that comfort oil. Uh, that sounds great. But my favorite product of the week, it's so funny because as starch queens, we always think alike. My product of the week is also the boo-boo stick, but different reason. <laughs> because I've been, bat I've been battling a uh, sore hamstring that's been you know, limiting my mm -hmm. running. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to try the boo-boo stick. And so I just kind of like put it on the backside of my hamstring. And dang it, if it didn't help it. It yep. made a big difference. So I'm oh, yeah. in love with the boo-boo stick. I'm it's my ma most favorite thing. And also, like, when I was back there in Cape Cod with you, and I got the you-know-what bit out of me by those dragonflies you got back I know. there. I know. Those flesh-eating biters <laughs> and put those on my the bites that, I mean, I was covered in. It made a huge difference. So that's my favorite product, too, is the well, boo-boo stick. Well, I was it's outside. Great... Oh, yeah. I was outside. I was doing landscaping in my, my yard. And I spent all day out, you know, digging ditches and putting plants and shrubs in. And at the end of the day, then I had to go over to somebody else's house and I was doing a party for Pure Haven Essentials. And I was sitting at this little tiny table. You know, she had like, you know, her son's like three-year-old yeah. table. Yeah, that's what you were saying. And, and I'm sitting on this little tiny stool at, next to this table. And I sat like that for like four hours. And by the time I got up, I couldn't, I could hardly walk. And by the time I got home, I wrapped a duct taped ice pack around my leg and went to <laughs> yeah, sleep. And then the next day, it was better with the ice pack. You know, that helped with the inflammation. And I was supposed to go to, to yoga and, and do yoga class. And I'm like, I can't go to yoga, do yoga. Well, I put this on. Ten minutes later, I went to yoga class. And I was yep. fine. It's yep. incredible. Good stuff. Absolutely Good stuff. incredible. Good All stuff. right. All right. So if you are interested in learning more about Pure Haven Essentials, you can check us out, uh, Gene, at purehaven, purehaven.com, Jay Schumacher, or Pure Haven. Just message us. Message or us. Just, just, we'll just put the link in the comments. But uh, you can do yeah, that too. Those are just, those just, to, just so for those of you who are new, that is a direct marketing company that has a product line, cleaning supplies, makeup, um, mm -hmm. all kinds of all stuff. All kinds of stuff. Chemical and toxin free. I mean, yep. and so those, so for those of you who use Arbon or Norwex, and you're, you know, con you're you're environmentally conscious about your home and your own well being and your own personal care products, check out Pure Haven Essential and do what Jean says. Compare them on the um, EWG. EW, EWG website because we'd always just say the more you know. 
The more you exactly. know, educate, ed educate yourself, educate yourself, educate yourself. Um, All right, let's um, go. We gotta so go. We gotta go. High five. High five. High All five. Right. High five. All right. Check uh, sqweightloss.com and check out our amazing website starchqueens.net a lot of good resources lots of good resources there next week on talking tuesdays are we going to have the doctor next week or is that still theoretically up in the air? i haven't heard it's still up in the air so okay, still i will up in the post air. that if we're going to have that we'll post an event and go eat your potato oh go eat your your no pack a potato with you everywhere you go yes to I avoid do. that zombie <laughs> snack machine the potato All right, everybody. Hour. The potato Good night, hour. John Boy. Good night, John Boy. <laughs>